Access Connects. I'm Kelly Goral with Hampton City Schools. If you take a moment and think back to your earlier years, one of the most important events in your life was probably high school graduation. So today I have two special guests with me from Kickatan High School, the top two students of their graduating class, Shannon Hepp and Claire Nelson. So welcome ladies, thanks for being here today. Thank you. <laughs> so the top two of your class, valedictorian and salutatorian, very high GPAs, very impressive. So let's start with Claire, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so for some background, I was actually born in Charlottesville. I'm not originally from Hampton. Uh, my dad's United Methodist pastor, so we move around Virginia a lot. Um, so we lived at Amherst at the time, then we moved to Alexandria, and then to Chesapeake, and then finally Hampton. And did you start um, at Kickatan when you moved to Hampton? No, so I actually got to Hampton in fifth grade, and I was in the gifted program, so I started at Spratly the first year that it was the gifted center, and then stayed there throughout middle school, and then finally ended up at Kickatan. And ended up at Kickatan. So Shannon, have you been a Hampton resident your entire life? I have not. I was actually originally born in Tampa, Florida, and I was there for a few years before I moved to Georgia, and then I came to Virginia. And that was about in third grade. And back in third grade. So which schools did you attend once you got here? So I had tested into the gifted program when I lived in Georgia. So about for the first half year um, when I was transitioning here, I went to Langley Elementary School before I went to Mary Peet Gifted Center and then over to Spratly Gifted Center with Claire and made it to Kickatan. So you all knew each other at Spratly? Yes, we did. Yeah. And have you had a lot of classes together at Kickatan? We've had a fair amount, yeah. yeah but different course loads. So tell me a little bit about your course load. Yeah, so um, in my early years of high school, it was mainly honors and AP classes, um, but starting junior year, I was in, I got into the Governor's School for Science and Technology for the Biological Sciences strand. Um, so I do a lot of that combined with AP work um, at Kickatan. Okay, okay. So tell me about the Governor's School. Like how does that work during the day? Yeah, so um, we start school at 7.10, so it's a bit earlier than the other high schools in Hampton. Um, and then we have our science courses, our math courses, and then our research course. And then we transition over to our home schools at about 10.30. Oh, excellent. And then you're there the rest of the day. Yep. So Shannon, tell me a, bit, a little bit about your coursework. So like Claire, I've also done a lot of honors and AP courses in my uh, first two years in high school and I was also accepted to the governor's school. However, I'm in the computational sciences strand. Um, and in addition to the AP courses and the governor's school courses, I also take dual enrolled courses through Thomas Nelson. And I've even taken some classes on their campus in the evenings. Okay, so it's not some classes through Thomas Nelson. You actually have a pretty significant accomplishment that I think you need to tell us a little bit about. Um, so I actually earned my Associates of Science in Computer Science through Thomas Nelson. And I was able to do that because I was taking so many dual enrolled courses and some of my APs transferred too, but I'm very proud of that achievement. <laughs> Absolutely. So you've already graduated. You had a college graduation, what, about two, three weeks ago before you even had your high school diploma. Is that correct? Yes. So <laughs> what is that like? It's kind of mind boggling and it's kind of funny because sometimes when I tell people that they're like, why are you even going to high school anymore? <laughs> well, we need you to keep coming to high school. You yes. only have, you know, had not much time left, but we need you to keep coming to high school. I haven't worked this hard for this long to quit now. <laughs> no, we're not gonna quit now. So what does that mean? You've got an associate's degree and you're going off to school in the fall. I mean, are you coming in as a freshman, a sophomore? Tell us a little bit about that. So since I got my degree in computer science, if I was continuing to major in computer science at my college of choice, then I would be going as, in as a junior. But as I'm changing my major to chemical engineering, I'm actually going in as a freshman. Wow, chemical engineering. So which schools were you interested in for the fall? Where did you apply? Um, where were you accepted? So I applied to UVA, Virginia Tech, and Georgia Tech, and I was accepted to all three. You're accepted all two through. So where are you heading? Where are you heading in the fall? I'm heading to UVA as a Rodman Scholar. So what does that mean, a Rodman Scholar? Um, being a Rodman Scholar means that you are a part of the top 5% of the incoming engineering class. Wow. So I'm very excited. Congratulations. <laughs> so you will be a Cavalier. Yes. <laughs> and there, and you already said what your major is. 
So Claire, how about you? Where um, did you apply? Where were you accepted for next year? So I was accepted into Yale, Columbia, University of Pennsylvania, University of Virginia, University of Richmond, Emory University, and Rice University. And where are you attending in the fall? I'm attending Yale in the fall. So, I mean, so many choices, mm -hmm. great schools for the both of you. Right. What made you choose Yale? So Yale, I really fell in love with the first time that I visited. I wanted to keep all of my options open, so that's why I applied to a lot of different schools. I'm interested in archaeology, and a lot of different schools have different programs, so I wanted to be able to actually compare those. Um, but Yale just has such a sense of community. They really value both on-campus life, but also reaching out into the surrounding city of New Haven. And I just felt that I really shared the same values as the faculty, staff, professors, and students there. Excellent. So what is your major going to be? Archaeology. What made you get into that? I've always loved history, and when I discovered archaeology, I was so mesmerized that you could investigate things in the past, like it, it wasn't um, just the present that you could investigate, and so that just really piqued my interest as being a very curious student, and then being able to piece together puzzles that have been lost to time. Wow, that is very impressive. <laughs> so both of you all have quite the course load, lots of accomplishments. Not quite sure how you have any spare time or even how you have time to sleep, <laughs> mind you. But, you know, Shannon, what are some of the extra things that you like to do or that you've participated in, either, you know, just at leisure or with the community? I participate in a lot of extracurricular activities, uh, especially through Kikatan. So I was president of the Ecology Club for the past two years. I've been uh, president of the French Club. I've also recently participated in the stock market game team, which was a very interesting activity. Um, and I've also been a really um, dedicated Girl Scout member. And tell us a little bit about that because I've heard <laughs> great things with you and Girl Scouts as well. So I actually joined Girl Scouts back before you were technically allowed to join Girl <laughs> Scouts because I have an older sister and my mom was her troop leader, so I kind of just got drug along to all the events. So I just, I really grew up with Girl Scouts and I think it's really shaped who I am now because being a Girl Scout introduces you to so many opportunities and so many ideas that you otherwise wouldn't be able to see, like interacting with women who are excelling in their STEM field careers or, you know, having the opportunity to deal with money through, you know, cookie sales. Everybody loves Girl Scout Everybody cookies. Everybody loves Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> um, but it was also an amazing opportunity because I was able to complete my Girl Scout Gold Award project, which is the highest um, service project you can complete in Girl Scouts. And it consisted of over an 80 hour volunteer service project that you had to develop and lead yourself. Wow. And it had to partner with a community um, organization and had to have a lasting impact after you leave. So what was your project? My project was straw bale gardening at a local church to provide fresh produce to their we uh, weekly free meal to the public called the Welcome Table. Oh, that is excellent. So Claire, spare mm -hmm. time? We well, don't, marching band is huge all in <laughs> yes. itself. But what are the other activities that you've participated in at Kikatan or outside of Kikatan? Yeah, so like you mentioned, marching band, that is um, basically all of fall. There's not much else free time I have then. I'm, um, this past year, I was both the woodwind captain and the flute piccolo section leader. So that was a big responsibility, make sure that all of the new members especially know what they're doing, what the expectations are. Um, but besides band, I do a lot through youth and government, which is a club at Kikatan. Um, and we participate in different programs like the Model Judiciary Program, the Model General Assembly. I've also been selected for a conference on national affairs through youth and government. Uh, we just do a lot of fun, cool stuff related to government and politics and have a lot of really neat discussions. Um, but besides that, I volunteer a lot, uh, especially through my honor societies and my church. Um, and then I'm also on the CNU math contest team. I've done that since sophomore year and that's a lot of fun. Uh, even though math isn't my favorite subject, Subject, but it's a lot less pressure so you're able to actually enjoy the math instead of being um, scared of it like in class and then I also just really like spending time with my friends and family well and you s seem to be very passionate about politics and government and yes. so but you're going into archaeology yes so those are very separate um, mm -hmm. pathways 
Yeah, and um, part of my life plan, in a sense, is I do want to do archaeology, and I want to go to graduate school for that and do a lot of field work, um, but I also want to go to law school, and then from both my law school experience and my experience in archaeology, I want to become a lobbyist for historical preservation, so yeah. you will see me on Capitol Hill. <laughs> oh, very good. That'll be neat. So, we're wrapping up. But before we do, you know, you all are getting ready to leave behind Kikatan High School. And there is the, the motto of Kikatan High. Tell me the motto. Yes. The home oh, where everyday, everyday greatness, greatness is, is the expectation. expectation. Okay, everyday greatness is the expectation. And obviously you all have met that expectation. <laughs> so as we're wrapping up, is there one piece of advice if you could just say one thing to your underclassmen as far as, you know, getting to where you are right now? What do you think that would be? So one of the other activities that I didn't mention is tennis. And I've been playing since my sophomore year. So I think the biggest piece of advice I could give to my fellow students is that you should really just get out there and start looking into extracurriculars early on. Because as a freshman, not having played any kind of sports or really been in many big clubs, I think it was really important to find that community that I really fit into and to be able to develop those interests over my four years instead of you know, waiting until my senior year to realize, oh, this is what I'm interested in. I wish I had been doing this all this time. So a little bit to make sure that you're well-rounded. Yes. <laughs> don't have a, like a narrow focus, but to try different things, meet different people. And don't let yourself hold yourself back, really, mm -hmm. because I think I would have started tennis sooner, I would have started a lot of other things sooner if I had had the confidence, you know, going into a sport that I hadn't played before. It can be a little daunting, but I think at Kikatan and really all of Hampton City Schools, everyone's just so welcoming that you can join pretty much anything and have a great community. Find your place. Mm -hmm. Claire, how about you? What would be one piece of advice for your underclassmen? Really similar to what Shannon said, I would say explore your options. And sometimes that means being in a club your freshman year, finding out you don't like it, and kind of crossing that off of your list. I think that a lot of times we get so bogged down with our grades and expectations that we don't allow ourselves to have fun. And you only have high school once. You only really have this one time to explore, so to take advantage of it. Well, excellent. Well, congratulations to the both of you. Thank you. Thank I'm you. very excited to see you all. You get a second diploma. <laughs> It's your first diploma, but we know there are many more on the horizon. <laughs> um, but congrats. You have definitely put in the work, and it has paid off. And we are very proud that you are a Hampton City graduate. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for joining us on HCS Connects. In the meantime, stay connected with the School Division on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, as well as our School Division website and our TV station. Thank you and have a great day.